Welcome to the second TCAS A Level English Literature Podcast with Dr. Kirby, Miss Wood, Amber, and Katie. Welcome all. Today we're talking about Othello. Miss Wood, what are we talking about? Um, today we're going to be looking at the handkerchief and its significance in Othello as a construct and a plot device, um, and um, just seeing what we what we think the significance is. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Well, um, handkerchief. <laughs> So, um, Thomas Reimer said that um, he believed the handkerchief was so um, such an obscure piece of evidence for Desdemona's unfaithfulness, um, which I believe, and he said uh, that if Cassio perhaps had had her garter or something else of that sort of mm, yeah. raunchy nature, then there would have been more solid proof, um, and it could have any consequence, like um, she could have just literally left it laying about which of course is what happened and that showed her unfaithfulness yeah. but um, I do think in a sense however of course a fellow had such a you know he had such a place in his heart for that handkerchief yeah. which I don't think was fair to put all that pressure on Desdemona I mean I, I want to ask you do you, yeah. do you think that the handkerchief is the issue here. I mean, Othello is upset about this handkerchief. What are we? What is the real crux of the issue here in the relationship? Not the handkerchief. Um, it's just almost like a scapegoat, isn't it? It's just that final last push that you could put everything on, really, isn't it? I think that's a really good, um, really nice analogy because the handkerchief does become... Um, problematic for the relationship and actually if anything sort of is a metaphor for their doomed love yeah. because if he places such importance on this handkerchief which by the way he discarded and the reason why it was discarded was because of you know because he, um, the character discards it um, then it does show that his impression of love is flawed and was always mm. doomed to failure yeah you know if the handkerchief was um, the reason why his father never strayed from his mother and it was down to a handkerchief then there was never any hope was I there? mean it's an odd symbol as well isn't it a handkerchief well, it's, um, it's difficult though because you could say that a lot of it is in the fault of Desdemona because everyone will probably at some point have an heirloom which they see as so important or just like a symbol of their family, their friends their closest relations which will have a different value for different people because some people they could be like that's just a ring, that's yeah. just an article of clothing. If that were to get broken, I don't feel any kind of, you know, sadness about that. So Desdemona could take a moment to really understand the importance of this handkerchief. And we see in the play, Othello goes on a quite a fair bit that it's a really important symbol to him. And she should maybe take that into consideration. I mean, what do you feel about the fact that she doesn't notice that she's actually lost it? She's, yeah, she's very just nonchalant. She disregards it, which could show, you know, negligence on Desdemona's half rather than putting all the blame on Othello. Because I know that if I had something that was so precious to me, meant a symbol of love, admiration, my family who have passed, if someone just didn't even notice that they'd lost it, I'd be... I wouldn't obviously kill anyone over it. um, (laughs) Good to know. (laughs) Yeah, it would be frustrating. And I think that that on top of their kind of strained relationship, especially with Desdemona's father and all of these strains which were already on it, that could have just been the breaking point for him. Absolutely. I don't think that he's told Desdemona until until the moment he actually says, this is the significance of it. It's their first love token. Um, but when she learns of its significance to him, she says, I wish I'd never seen it. Um, so as well, um, again, it's this lack of communication, mm. isn't it, that we see that again links the doom love. So where we're saying Thomas Ryman is saying it's of no consequence, actually what it represents in terms of the doomed love and the poor communication, um, perhaps it you know, it does, it sort of does have that significance in the, in the play. What, what about the, the strawberries? What about, you know, the, the, the pattern, the, the, the colour of this handkerchief? Um, well, a fellow says, doesn't he, that his mother was gifted by a sibyl um, and it had been created with the blood of mummified virgins. Um, and I think that the blood is so, such a juxtaposition in itself. Yeah. I mean, obviously, blood 
the colour red, love and anger, and then blood in itself. I mean, blood from a cut, blood from a wound, and then blood from uh, menstruation. It's a symbol of fertility, I suppose, in a way. So the colour represents so many different things, and it's just such a simplistic uh, pattern. And then, of course, it's the strawberries, which is uh, an aphrodisiac. There's so many symbols or I suppose, I don't know, a motif within each tiny little detail within the thing. And then the white or the black, depending on the interpretation, the purity of Desdemona, um, or the black could be the corruption, the evil. Yeah. It's, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting. And how does this, how does this all sort of um, fit in with the, the, the bed sheet later on? It's the bed sheets which they consummate the marriage on. Um, which I guess shows a lot of loyalty to Desdemona because she, when that moment when she knew she was going to die and she still wanted there to be that love token, which obviously wasn't there then in the handkerchief. And then the handkerchief and its visuals kind of foreshadowed the end for them because obviously in most interpretations it's white with red, similar to the bed sheets. And then, yeah, again, like the black with white, racism as well. Mm. It's that every kind of, motif symbol in Othello is in some way put into the handkerchief. Why do you think that Desdemona says um, put the bed sheets on the bed and Othello's told her to go go to her bedroom and she asks for the bed sheets to be put on the bed the wedding sheets why those sheets what is the suggestion here what does she want to represent to Othello? Um, that she's still as loyal, as innocent, as pure as she was when they first got married. And whatever Othello is thinking isn't true and that she is still that same pure girl. And obviously at this point, Othello's kind of lost it. But maybe she might think this might just bring him back to reality, remind him of the time where things were okay and that things could be okay again. But obviously... But why doesn't she defend herself? Why doesn't she tell him? Because she's a... (laughs) <laughs> stereotypical Shakespearean woman and she doesn't do anything she's not good old Lady Macbeth is she? No. She's so it's isolated not. as well isn't she? You know her father has you know um, cast the f- first really seed of doubt hasn't he? Um, she's done this to me she's done this to her father and she will to you too there's no going back is there? She's in a, in a strange land with strange you know strangers essentially isn't she she is very isolated on her own um arguably she is adhering to the convention she has spent her courage and determination and i guess the reality that she's made the wrong choice in doing that would make her probably a bit more insecure about doing that a second time wouldn't it not having made the right choice the first time perhaps um going back to the where the handkerchief is is lost which falls into iago's um, duplicitous plans um, Desdemona offers the handkerchief to Othello because he's got a headache and he discards it and says the handkerchief is too little and it falls to the floor at which point um, Amelia then picks it up with regard to the headache there is lots of associations between headaches and cuckoldry what ideas of could you have about that in terms of the cuckold? I mean, I think it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because obviously you've kind of got this idea of him having sort of horns growing out of his head and this sort of idea of him having been cheated on and having this sort of headache, this this outer manifestation of what he is feeling inside. Absolutely. And, and the fact that he believes that he is being cheated on. He's been cheated on. And the cuckold is, is referred to so many times by the men, isn't it, as... Um, this fear of, of female sexuality yeah. and the idea that they are faithless, they, they cannot, you know, they're full of lust, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the fear of men of women is present throughout all of the male characters. But what is it with Iago and, and you know, why, why does he want this handkerchief so much? Why, why is it he, you know, he, he badgers Amelia to get this handkerchief from him and eventually she succumbs to him and she gets this handkerchief and she brings it to him. Why does he want it? I think just in a way he he probably understands maybe even greater than Desdemona does the importance and at that point how fragile a fellow is with all of the leadership, the competitiveness. He probably can understand that this could be 
that token that will just finish him off finally. Mm. And because um, he's obviously so malicious and so heartless, he will just, he's willing to put Desdemona at risk. And obviously, the handkerchief is also, it's spread around every character at some point, which just shows how yeah, willing interesting. Iago was to just ruin everyone even though his intentions were just set out on the fellow. That's a really interesting point, because yeah. that handkerchief is passed from person to person to person, and yet it's something that's so precious. So precious. And so fleeting. Yeah, just like the love. Excellent. So, overall, I know we're talking about the handkerchief, but Desdemona's fate, does she deserve it? She could have put up a big fight. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I don't think... Anyone is deserving of death. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, she didn't fight very much, did she? But I think oh, when she comes back to say, "You didn't kill me; it was my own choice." Oh, is that disappointing? Extremely. I wish she just. She's never really stood up for herself, has she? Not even for, to her father. She just. And I think back to the isolation. I think her running away with a fellow to get married in the first place wasn't anything to do with uh, the race or the you know, the secret of it. I think it was just because that she's so, dis- like, afraid of her father and so disappointed of his... But she, but she, she obviously, he, she's had a lot of suitors and he has agreed because he says, doesn't he, that um, lots of Venetians of the highest rank have, have been turned down and he's obviously let her, let her have her own choice in that respect, say no to, no to um, all these different men, Rodrigo being one of them. Mm. Um, so I, th- I think she must have had some element of choice. Yeah. And, you know, I, th- I think that she sort of has chosen, but she's transferred one allegiance to another, hasn't she? Rather than maybe having, being independent. But, you know, we're looking at the character with our modern eyes, aren't we, at the same time? Um, you know, we would be, you know, the idea of blaming the victim now today, for you know, placing any sort of suggestion of blame on them, we wouldn't do, would we? Whereas we're looking at this text um, sort of with our historical eyes and thinking, well, this maybe mm. represents, say, the stereotype. I mean, in a way, we can draw a compar- comparison now with perhaps Isabella, you know, a- another character who we know perhaps doesn't stand up for herself very much. And as a result of that, the, the men in her life get the better of her. I mean, do you draw any comparisons with any of our... Um, Linda in Death of the Salesman. Oh, I think there yes. is a big comparison between the um, handkerchief and maybe the silk stockings. Yeah. They are simply just a like That's a fabric. So Nothing really. Yeah. It's just but both frippery, aren't they? Yeah. They're not important. Yeah. Both yeah. of these things getting damaged, discarded is such a big symbol for the characters and for audiences, readers, that the love is breaking apart and no matter how much you try and fix it it's a bit far gone and it's just like was once a symbol of love purity admiration and is now just a disheveled yeah nothing and i suppose the 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 silk stockings perhaps are a symbol of sort of sexuality femaleness the handkerchief maybe again female you know women crying being upset virginity virginity yes yeah yeah Absolutely, and the betrayal as well, because in both, actually, we've got the betrayal of the stockings, haven't we? Linda's sitting at home mending the stockings um, while the mistress gets the new stockings, and then um, in, in, in Othello, the betrayal of friend against friend and husband against wife and maybe wife against husband as well. Yeah. So, so of all the female characters you've come across, is there one, perhaps, that you dislike the most or dislike the least? I don't want to say I dis- don't dislike any of them, but I think oh, I just wish Desdemona put up a fight. I yeah. really do, because she is such um, a sweet-natured character, and she really, truly does care for a fellow, and it's not fair on her because she wasn't explicitly told the significance of this handkerchief. And if she'd only, I don't know, just said, had a one last fight in her... Yeah. And I think she would have been. Her life could have been saved. Yeah. It would have been exposed. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a tragedy then, they would it? Yeah. The tragedy would have been Othello losing his status, wouldn't it? And not the loss of the wives. The wives would, would have lived. Yeah. So, so we can say probably the women are products of, of their environment, of their context. And, and are therefore the sacrifice, aren't they? 
The sac- sacrificial lambs. And yet, when yeah. and when we look at Othello, the the biggest, um, you know, when we're looking at tragedy, we're thinking about the loss of status, aren't we, of the men, yeah. and how far they've fallen. Once again, that is our sort of it's our focus. That's our focus, yeah. rather than the Oxara side. Hmm. Very interesting. So going back to Thomas Ryman, then the handkerchief is so remote, no one can make any consequence of it. Should we go around the room and say? what we think indeed um well i personally believe that that the handkerchief is is something that one can think an awful lot about and can spend an awful lot of time thinking about and you know thinking about all the different connotations which you can attach to it um i don't think that it is that um, remote or that um, unable to be able, I think we can piece together our arguments and think about how the, the this handkerchief represents so much to Othello and as a result it is a significant symbol which I think um, when we're sitting down and we're, we're talking about um, its significance I think um, we have to acknowledge that it is significant so yeah I'm not sure I agree with them it's um, significant. It could potentially um, be because of, you know, like it going missing could draw other consequences. So, for example, it could be like, you killed someone because you lost a handkerchief. It doesn't necessarily have to be the unfaithfulness. And I think especially because Othello didn't exclaim that to Desdemona as clearly as he should have. I think it is still a very important symbol of miscommunication just that fading away of the love and it's just it's still important to recognize it as a symbol but in some ways it could you know be drawn like could draw other consequences i just think it is significant but it's significant to a fellow i mean again just literally building off of your point he hasn't explained to anyone the significance it is to him apart from that other people in his family and I feel like he wasn't explaining to his mother I want this handkerchief because it kept my father faithful I feel like it's kind of been forced upon him so it's significant to his mother so then it has to be significant to him do you think he's got a fear of his own faithfulness do you think there's something there perhaps deep inside his psyche about this handkerchief and losing this handkerchief and his own ability to be a good husband yeah, perhaps, considering it was his mother who had it, I mean, as a woman. A fellow's not a woman, so therefore, is the handkerchief not a token of a fellow's, or a fellow, Desdemona's um, faithfulness? It is a token of his, and therefore, by her losing it, it's almost insinuating it's her fault if he goes and cheats, because she's lost that token. And actually, he is deep, he, he does betray her, doesn't he? Yeah. Just not through, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not a sexual betrayal. Um, Miss Wood, what do you think? I think it's... I, I, love, I love the handkerchief. Um, I think it's just brings so much richness to the whole... Um, and the duplicity of it. I think it just makes... And, and as you said, I love the way it passes through every character's hands. And um, I think it's just so interesting as an idea, the way that it represents so many different external factors, cuckolding and... Um, the idea of because um, there is also with the bed sheets thinking about did they ever actually consummate their yeah. marriage because there were so many interruptions they were not together on their wedding night they were in separate mm. ships um, and then Cassio with the clowns and you know the fight so you know I just think it's just such a brilliant way to introduce the ridiculousness <laughs> of the doomed love yeah absolutely it's so futile isn't yeah. it and the handkerchief i think encompasses all of that yeah and somebody at the end's got the handkerchief to blow their nose on and <laughs> wipe their eyes <laughs> well you have to you have to wipe your eyes don't you because poor Othello, look at him he's lost everything i know absolutely let's not worry about their wives yeah right. well i think that was that was lovely thank you guys thank you yeah really enjoyed that and um we'll see you next time thank you